I hope you guys all had a fantastic weekend because guys, I finally did it. That's right, I finally did it. I submitted my books to CGC. I've been talking about this for so long that I was getting prepared, I was getting ready. And me and my best friend Josh submitted 25 books in total to CGC. They should be arriving there this Thursday. So that means hopefully in like two weeks to three weeks, I will have a CGC unboxing for you guys, which is always a ton of fun. I got some really cool books that I personally submitted, some older ones, like from the 80s, which I normally don't collect, but those two bangers that I picked, those Dave Stevens are in there. It's gonna be so good to get them up on the wall, CGC slab. But there's also some pretty ones in there as well with some just gorgeous cover art. But I'll make sure I write down my guesses of what the grades are, and then we'll go over and see how close that I was, and yeah. That is the news that I have for you before we dive into today's video. But guys, make sure you guys are sticking around to the end of the video to find out if you guys won last week's giveaway and also to find out how to enter this week's giveaway. All right guys, let's dive in to today's video. What is going on comic book fans? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Wednesday pull list, which is your hype video for New Comic Book Day. This video is filled with excitement and love and passion for comic books and the comic books that are coming out this week on New Comic Book Day, which is January 24th of 2024. Guys, I'm gonna go over my favorite covers, my favorite books, the not top three, but the books you gotta see. I'm gonna go over all of it. And there actually are two books, almost three books. I'm gonna keep the other one on the list, but two books on the chopping block this week. The story is just not that good. So guys, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and check out my pull list. Now, as you guys can see, this list right back here isn't too bad. There was only 15 books on this pull list, but you guys can't see what those books are. So let me go on up and throw it up on screen right now. Like I said, there are 15 books on my pull list. There is one new number one, and every book you see on screen right now, I was able to read the previous issue, so I'm all cut up on all the stories. But guys, let's break down this list a little more. There are six books from DC Comics, four Marvel, and five independent. Now, there are only 14 books that I had to read, which is a normally a pretty small week for me. But guys, I was behind on, let's say, I think 11 of the 14 books that I was supposed to read. So I actually had to read almost double the amount of books. It was almost 30 books in total that I had to read over the weekend. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I gotta keep caught up on all these stories so that way I'm not reading all weekend. But guys, there were some really good books. There was actually some not so good books. So let's go ahead and go over the books that are actually on the chopping block this week. <laughs> I love that this video is just filled with positivity because that's what I love. I love bringing positivity to the comic book community in this whole atmosphere because I don't like bringing negativity. But when there is a bad book, I got to tell you guys about it. And there are two books that are on the chopping block this week. And the first one up is The Flash. That's right, guys, The Flash. Issue number five, I believe, comes out this week. I read issues number three and issue number four. And guys, I just don't like this story at all. This is coming from writer Simon Spurrier and has art by Mike Diodato Jr. I don't love Mike Diodato Jr.'s artwork. I do definitely, definitely do not like the story that's going on in this story. It's like weird, it's dark, it doesn't feel like the Flash at all. I had a feeling I wasn't gonna like it, but I like picking up every single new run of the Flash, or I gave this a shot, but I am not gonna collect this anymore. It is officially coming off my pull list. I have the next two issues coming in my previous orders, but that's gonna be it for me, unless I read those in the story somehow it gets drastically better, but I don't think it is. So I'll pick this back up when there is a switch in the creative team. And the other book that is on the chopping block this week is Superior Spider-Man. Issue number three comes out tomorrow, and guys, I just gotta tell you, I usually give a series that at least the first story arc, but Dan Slott's writing in this book and Mark Badley's artwork is just not for me. I am not enjoying the story at all. I loved the original Superior Spider-Man. Doc Ock as Spider-Man having this conflict where he is a bad guy, but he has like Peter Parker's little bit of his soul still speaking to him, making him make the not terrible choices that Doc Ock normally would. 
I love that concept, and that is just not what this book is anymore. I am not enjoying this book at all. If you guys are, I am so happy, but I am all in on Jonathan Hickman's Ultimate Spider-Man. That first issue was incredible. If you guys didn't read that, definitely check that out. That is an amazing Spider-Man book, and I cannot wait to read more. But guys, those are the two books on the chopping block, Superior Spider-Man and The Flash. And the other book that is almost there is Thor, or The Immortal Thor. I am not enjoying that run at all either. But that's a little bit better. So it's staying on the pull list right now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move over to the next section, which is full of positivity and love and passion because it's my cover lover fix. So many good covers coming out this week. Let's see, three, six, nine, 12, 13 amazing covers to share with you guys. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And the first one up is a banger. Zawe plus the Belly of the Beast, issue number three, the cover D, which is the one in 25 ratio variant done by Riley Rosimo. Rosimo. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I say Rosimo, because it's an O, not a U. So Rosimo. But his artwork is absolutely fantastic. And check out how he's done Zawe. So freaking cool. There's so much energy and passion and it looks like anger in that pose. So good. I really hope I can get my hands on that cover because I'm a huge fan of his and I'm a huge fan of this book. But next up is Red Sonia issue number seven with the cover L, which is the limited virgin cover. And it is so good. It's done by Lucio Perillo. And come on. It's Perillo on a Red Sonja. What I really like about this cover is that Red Sonja actually looks a little beefy because Red Sonja, if you think, she's like always like carrying around these heavy ass swords and kicking the shit out of so many dudes, she would be a big beefy girl. And this is a girl is big and beefy in more than one way. All right, guys, next up is Punisher issue number three, the one in 25 ratio variant done by none other than Lucio Perillo. Another Perillo cover, and this is an awesome, awesome Punisher one. Now, you can take or leave the new Punisher book after reading issue number two. I was definitely sucked more into the book as after reading issue number one. This is the exact same story as Frank Castle, but they completely flipped it on its head in issue number two. So it's actually really interesting now. And this looks like it's gonna be Morbius, even though in the synopsis of the book, they called it something else. I forgot what it was at the top of my head, but really, really cool cover. Next up, an absolute banger of a cover. I know, I always say a banger of a cover, but this is Universal Monsters Dracula issue number four, the cover B variant done by Jenny Frizen. Now this book is a fantastic read from James Tinney in the fourth and the cover right here by Jenny Frizen is just, it's Jenny Frizen, baby. It is so good. Next up, I've talked about this book a couple times and this cover a couple times. This is Ghost Machine issue number one with the cover F variant done by Francis Manipal. Manipal, I'm not sure. Either way, this is absolutely fantastic. This is definitely an homage to Little Miss Sunshine with a new team of characters which are going to have their first appearances in this book. I can't wait. Ghost Machine number one. Definitely mean picking that up this week. We're gonna talk about this book a little more in just a few minutes. Now next up is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 147. This is the cover C, which is the one in 10 um, ratio cover, which is absolutely fantastic. It's done by Jorge Corona. Fantastic artwork. And then there's also the one in 25 ratio variant, which is the black and white version of this cover, which is again, it's absolutely fantastic because Jorge Corona does some amazing artwork, especially when he's doing the turtles. So cool. And if you guys did not hear, they are relaunching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles after issue number 150, written by Jason Aaron. And it's going to have some amazing artwork. There's going to be Four single issues, one featuring Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo, Leonardo, the four original turtles, and they're gonna have different artists. The first one is gonna be Raphael, and it's gonna be by Joel Jones, which is gonna be fantastic. And I think it's Cliff Chang, um, Raphael, um, Albuquerque, and one other artist, again, blanking off the top of my head, doing each of those books, and I believe Raphael Albuquerque is going to be the main artist on the book with Jason Aaron after those first four issues. I'll put the right information on here if, in case I am incorrect, but guys, super exciting. But these two covers for issue number 147 are absolutely amazing. Now, next up are two covers for the Penguin, which are both bangers, and I've talked about these covers before. First up is the cover B variant done by Steven Subic. It is fantastic. And if you're not reading this book, you're definitely missing out on a fantastic Penguin book. It's so good. But this cover right here is just, 
It's the penguin. He looks like a true menacing mob boss, and it's so good. And the next one is the cover C, which is the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Raphael de la Torre. I want to say that's how it's pronounced. But again, this awesome cover where the penguin looks like a true mob boss, which is so good. It's so good. The reds, the grays, the blacks, oh, everything in this cover is so good. Now, next up, we have two covers, again, for Power Girl issue number five. Now, the first one up is the cover B variant done by Jeff Spokes. I've shown this cover so many times since it was released to the public. It's so good. It's Jeff Spokes. It's Power Girl looking sexy and strong. And the next cover is the cover C variant done by Raza. Raza goodness guys this cover is so good she's flying again she looks beautiful but she's not over sexualized she just looks sexy in her own way so good now next up is a really cool cover for Green Arrow issue number eight the cover A done by Phil Hester with Onomatopoeia which it is a great villain name and it's so good I love the bright vibrant colors all over this cover it's so good and I'm just a big fan of this book right now. I love Green Arrow. It's not the best book, but it's a super solid book, especially if you like the character of Oliver Queen, Green Arrow. It's just fantastic. Now, next up is Spawn, issue number 349, the issue before the big 350. Now, this is the cover B variant done by Mariko Cloak. I want to say that's how it's pronounced. I have no idea. I'm probably totally butchering your last name, but your cover art on this Spawn cover is so good. Now, the last cover that I want to share with you guys is Harley Quinn issue number 36, the cover F variant done by Derek Chu. This might be some of Derek Chu's best artwork, in my opinion. I haven't seen every single art piece he's ever done in, my, in his whole entire career, but this cover right here is fantastic. It just screams Harley Quinn. She looks fantastic. I love all the, the energy behind her, the fire, she, the fact that she's sitting on a bomb. So good. All right, guys, those are all my cover lover picks for this week's new comic book day, which again is January 24th of 2024. <sighs> that was a lot. So let's go ahead and move over to the next section, which is the new number one that I think you guys just have to be excited about. Before we get into that new number one, I want to ask you guys, look down. Have you guys hit that like button yet? If you haven't, do me a favor and smash that like button. It really helps this video and helps this channel out so much if you guys could. So please hit that like button. All right, guys, let's go ahead and find out what that new number one that everyone should be excited about. There was only one new number one on my pull list this week, so it was really easy to choose which book to be excited about. But guys, this new number one is kicking off a new true universe within Image Comics. It's the Geiger universe. It's going to be so freaking amazing. And guys, I'm talking about the book called Ghost Machine. The Ghost Machine is a collective of writers and artists at Image Comics, and they're building out this new universe, and it's going to be so exciting. I'm just going to read off some of the names that are working on some of these stories. We got Jeff Johns, obviously, and Peter J. Desami, Ivan Rias, Francis Manipal, Brian Hitch, Gary Frank, Jason Fabach, and Lamont McGee. That's everyone right now that are contributing to these amazing stories. And let me go ahead and read the synopsis for this book because this is going to be a banger of a book that's going to introduce us to a lot of new characters and also continue the storylines that we've seen so far from Junkyard Joe and Geiger. And I'm just so excited for this book. A groundbreaking new era for comics, Characters and Creators launches now. An all-new powerhouse creative collective collides into comics with Ghost Machine's 64-page special, introducing its all-new shared universe of strange, fun, exciting, and action-packed characters. Geiger, Red Cloak, Rook, and the Rockefellers, and many, many more. What ties Geiger, Red Cloak, Widow X, and the other mysterious historical heroes of the unnamed together? Why is Rook the key to saving the war-torn world of Exodus? How will everyone's soon-to-be favorite family of the future adapt to a new life in the present? The stories all start now. Creators you know, characters you'll love, welcome to Ghost Machine. I mean... That just gets me pumped and excited. Even though they don't give us a lot of like meat to chew on, 
just the covers. Guys, there are so many covers for this book that have a lot of the amazing characters that I just spoke about on the covers. I will make sure I'll have shown all the covers up to this point. You guys pick your favorite. There are so many good ones. I like the cover F, the cover B, which is the foil of the cover A, but it's a virgin. And then there's the one in 100, which is going to be signed in numbered, I believe by Gary Frank or Jason Verbach. I forgot who the artist was on that book. It doesn't matter. It's going to be signed and numbered. I'll put who it is right here on screen for you guys so that way it's confirmed. And yeah, this is just a super exciting book. Everyone should be diving into this new universe. I love all these new universes that are exploding over at Image Comics. You've got um, Skybound's Energon universe, like bringing all those 80 nostalgists to us. And then we have this new universe with new heroes with some amazing freaking creators bringing these new characters to us. I'm just... I'm so excited. If you guys were not excited, I hope I got you excited because this is really, really gonna be one hell of a number one that's gonna explode this new universe. All right, guys, that is the new number one that I think you guys have to be excited about. Let's go ahead and dive in to my top three books that I think you guys have to be picking up this week because the stories are so freaking good. All right, guys, the number three book that I think you guys have to be picking up. Now, this is the third best of all the books that I read this week. 14 titles. This was the third best. And guys, I'm talking about The Penguin, issue number six. Now, this is coming from writer Tom King and art by Steven Subic. And guys, I read issues number three and four. No, four and five yesterday. And these issues were so good. I love how Tom King is telling this story. And I got to tell you guys, Tom King is known for having like these super word heavy books that you have to slog through. And even though I shouldn't say slog because most of the time it's like all oh, this like dialogue and story building and you really get sucked into his worlds because he gives you so much information. But this book right here is like a nice middle point. There's usually a good amount of reading to it, but it's not his normal like a lot of reading. It's just enough and the artwork by Steven Subic is so good. And the way they're telling the story of the penguin, he was like down at his lowest. He he was kicked out of Gotham and now he's building himself back up. He's building his crew where he can bring himself back into Gotham and take over his kids. That's right. His kids had taken over his empire and now he's come back. And now he's coming back to Gotham to take what is his from his kids. And that is such a great story. Issues number four and five were so good. Even though five had like this weird feeling that he was going to lose. But then at the end, there's this nice twist and it was so good. Yeah, this book is amazing and it's a must have pickup in my opinion. It's a great Tom King book. It's a great Bat Family book. Yes, it's not like, you know, true Bat Family, but it's a Bat villain. So it's in that whole umbrella of the Bat Family. And if you guys like Batman and you like his like cast of characters that are always around him, you guys will most likely really, really enjoy this book. All right, guys, that is the number three book. I hope I convinced you guys to try this book if you haven't tried it yet. We're only six issues in. You can, I'm sure you guys can find all the previous issues at your local LCS. If you can, you can definitely pick them up online. Get cut up. Read this book. It's fantastic. And don't forget those two amazing variants, the B cover in the 1 in 25 for this issue right here. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move over to the next book, which is my number two. All right, guys, I know I'm a 43 year old man, grown man with three kids. Well, no, four kids. I always forget about my oldest. He's out in Colorado doing his own thing. But I have three kids living in my house right now that are under 14. But guys, this book is from Boombox, which you don't know what Boombox is. It's the kid line from Boom Studios. But this book, Zawe plus the belly and the beast is so Good. It is so good. This is issue number three that comes out today. No, sorry, tomorrow on January 24th. And I got to tell you guys, you have to be reading this book. It's so good. Now, this is coming from the writer artist of Michael Delanis. He was the artist on Wind, which was that amazing James T. in the fourth book. And this book has the same kind of feels. You get sucked into this world where there is this like deity of the like the, the land. And she is like captured by this evil like mayor and she's put in this dungeon and um, we're not exactly sure why because there are only two issues in. The mayor's motives have not been like told to us just yet but this awesome group of kids end up finding her, releasing her and then issue number two was a lot about them getting to know her and she was like you know trapped in the dungeon for so long she doesn't know how to speak English and they give her a fresh pair of clothes, they take the chains off her, they give her some 
some food. She gets so happy and like flowers start blooming in her hair and so many cool things. This book is fantastic and the artwork is like so good. It's great pacing, great dialogue. Like the artwork again, it just, it blows my mind every time I look at every single page. It's just, it's fantastic. And it's a great book that you could read with your kids, which is another great reason to pick up this book if you have kids. Did I convince you? Did I convince you to get down to your local LCS or go online and order these books? Because if I haven't, I swear to God, try it. Just try it. And this banger covers for every single issue. The first one has some awesome ones from Scotty Young. There's an awesome FOC um, reveal variant that I missed out on. There's some Jetty Frizen one. There is just covers, covers, covers. And that 125 for this one right here by Riley Rosimo is so good. All right, guys. That is my number two. I hope I convinced you, but let's go ahead and move over to the number one book that I think you guys have to be picking up because it was the best story to pick up this week. All right, guys, the number one book is a Marvel book, and that really doesn't happen too, too often on this channel because it's usually indies or DC books landing in that number one spot. But guys, this book from Marvel Comics was definitely the best read of the week. And guys, I'm talking about God's issue number four from the amazing writer of Jonathan Hickman and art by Valerio Shitty. I want to say that's how you pronounce this young man's last name. But guys, his artwork in this book is so good. It is absolutely fantastic. And it's a great fit for this cosmology, cosmos tale from Jonathan Hickman. Now, I'm not gonna do this book justice. There is so much going on it. And to get you guys truly caught up, I don't, I just, I couldn't do it. I'm not that kind of, um, I'm not eloquent enough to do that. But guys, this story features these two amazing characters. You got the natural order of things and the powers that be. Now the powers that be has this very Doctor Strange as character. He's super cool. He's like magical and then get the first couple issues he's fighting like these really crazy things and then he meets up with Doctor Strange. But then there's the, um, the natural order of things which is a very science based community and they're like you know they kind of like you know like they butt heads against the powers that be because you know the powers that be are very like magical and they do magic things and they believe in that stuff and then the science is like well that's magic how the hell does that happen we believe that you know there is a science-based reason for everything and it's super cool there is so much more to it that is a very like baseline tale but they're introducing all these amazing characters and it's like cosmic and crazy and i don't understand all of it but I love it. I truly do. Jonathan Hickman is telling a tale and he doesn't have like those single page all text things in his story or in this story. It's all just like normal comic books because that's one thing he did in the X-Men line. There was always like this like you're reading and then there'd be like three or four pages of pure text and I did not like that. There was so, it took you out of the comic book experience in my personal opinion. But this story is so out there and crazy and good and Doctor Strange is in it, and I love that how he's tied into this story. I love the fact that the main character that we're following in the, in the natural order of things actually is married to the powers that be guy, but then they end up like, I think, separating. I don't think they're officially divorced yet. Maybe they are, I can't remember. But um, they loved each other so much, but they're like, you know, because they believe in such different things, they, the girl thought she had to pull apart from the marriage. It was so cool. This book is like, there's so much going on. I definitely need to go back and reread like all the issues to truly get caught up on everything, but I don't have time for that. So I'm just gonna enjoy this story and I hope you guys give this story a chance. I know I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this to you guys, but just know that there's a lot of meat on this new cosmology, I believe that's the right word, for this like new part of the Marvel Universe that I don't think has ever been told before. And that right there is really cool to me that they're introducing something big like this into the Marvel Universe and I hope it has an impact. I really do because Marvel needs that. Marvel needs some really good books and some really new cool things to be happening because a majority of their line isn't too exciting. They have the freaking X-Men and that is not a good universe right now. So this right here could be launching something really cool. And then there's the Ultimate Universe, which again, Jonathan Hickman is leading that in like Ultimate Spider-Man was so good. And all the issues leading up to the launch of that issue was so good. We had Ultimate Black Panther next from Brian Hitch. 
And oh, I forgot what's coming after that, but guys, I'm so excited for this new Ultimate Universe and this right here, Gods. Gods is so fantastic. All right, guys, that is the number one book. Again, I'm sorry for doing such a poor job of explaining this book to you, but I hope you guys can give this book a chance because it's amazing writing, amazing artwork, and amazing new world within the Marvel Universe. It's so cool. All right, guys, with that said, let's go ahead and check out the not top three, but the books you gotta see. All right, guys, we're going to go through the rest of the books that I have not talked about yet on this video that are on my pull list. These are going to be your little bite-sized nuggets of information that hopefully gets you a little bit excited about these books because the rest of these books are pretty good. So the first book up is Batman, The Brave and the Bold, issue number nine. Every single cover is done by Simon DeMeo so far, so you get amazing artwork. But then this is an anthology book. I normally don't like anthology stories because they don't fit into the continuity of the universe that they're in. They're just like short stories. But I gotta tell you guys, I gave this book a chance and a lot of the stories inside of this have been really, really good. I'm really enjoying it. Um, a three issue story by Gillian Marsh just wrapped up, which was incredible. It was so good. And before that, there was a Tom King, Mitch Gerard story, which was fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. And there is this new story about this character, um, Road Dog or something. Um, it's a really cool character. I'm really enjoying that story. And there's just, it's really fun. There are stories that I skip in every single issue. If I read like the first page or so and I don't like it or I don't like the artwork, I just skip it. I don't have to read these stories. They're just fun stories. But I got to tell you, if you haven't checked out Batman Brave and the Bold just yet, Maybe give it a shot because the Gillian Mart story was fantastic. The Tom King story was fantastic. There's some really, really good stuff in these books. Next up, The Bone Orchard Mythos Tenement, issue number eight. This is a really creepy, really crazy Jeff Lemire story with art by Andre Sorrentino. So good. And that's all I really should have to say for you to want to check this book out if you haven't checked it out so far. It's about a building with basically hell below it and like the tenements uh, or the tenants of the building actually get stuck down there. It's crazy and it's really cool. Next up, Detective Comics issue number 1081. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I stopped reading this after about four or five issues of Ron B's run and I'm still collecting it. I still collect it because I collect every single issue of Detective Comics if I don't like it or not. I know Chris over at Lost in Comics, this was like the best read of the year, I believe, for him and I believe it won an award. So maybe I'll go back and get caught up, but I had to get read like seven issues and that's probably not gonna happen. So when the next arc starts, I'll probably start reading it. I don't know. Or maybe this will be just like Spawn. I'll always collect it, but never read it. All right, guys, next up is Green Arrow issue number eight. This is just a fantastic, and it turns out to be a family book. That's right, the whole Green Arrow family is in every single issue. It's fantastic. And I love the fact that there is a true love story within the DC universe that always lasts. Diana Lance, Oliver Queen, they freaking love each other and they always find each other and they always help each other and I love it. It is so good. If DC Comics ever breaks them up, I'm gonna be so freaking pissed. But I love the Arrow family, it's so good. All right guys, next up, The Immortal Thor, issue number six. Yeah, this book is like this close to going on the chopping block. The story is okay. I don't know where they're going with it. They seem to be doing like these really out there cosmic tales. I don't want it. I don't need it. Please, please make Thor good again. When Jason Aaron was on Thor, it was so good. And then it's just like, it hasn't been the same ever since he left, but hopefully they can bring it back. And next up is Lotus Land issue number three. Now this is coming from one of my favorite writers, Darcy Van Polgies. He wrote Little Bird. If you didn't read Little Bird, read Little Bird and read this. It's futuristic, it's sci-fi, it's crazy, and it's really, really cool. There's some heart to it. There's like this grisly detective character and he has this son, but this son is like, you know, I believe going to be a robot of some kind. I'm not 100% sure, but I can't wait to find out it's gonna be so cool next up the Punisher issue number three guys I was about to drop this book after reading issue number one because I really thought it was just gonna be a rehash of Frank Castle story but in issue number two flipped it on its head really liked it I like the writing style of David Popose um and yeah there's some great art in this book and it's really cool I like the twist they did to the book and I can't wait to see more all right guys next up is Titans of Beast World issue number five I don't hate it, I don't love it, but what I don't like about this book is that there's this gigantic like event happening across the globe and there's so much destruction. And then 
none of this destruction is gonna like carry over in the universe. It's just gonna be like this event happened and then the world's back to normal. And I would like it if an event like this, where there's like cities being leveled, there's repercussions to that. There was a story in Marvel where there was a school that was blown up by this character and that had ramifications within the universe for a long time. That's what I think should happen when an event like this happens. If there's like big cities being destroyed by this big event, there should be like aftermath for it. And I don't know if there's going to be. And that's what I don't like about this book. Because I think it's just going to be like a reset of the universe. Or they're just going to move forward and pretend like none of this ever happened. But we'll see. We'll see. And the last book to talk to you guys about is Universal Monsters Dracula issue number four. Coming from Martin Simmons and James Tinian IV. It's creepy. It's Dracula. I'm really enjoying it. It just, it's not the best but because it's kind of a story that I already know and they're just kind of like retelling it with a little bit of a twist. But Martin Simmons artwork is absolutely fantastic. And again, just the pacing of the story from James Dean IV is great. So it's a really good read. The covers have been good. That Jenny Frizen for this issue right here, which is issue number four, is like really good. Um, but yeah, those are the not top three, but the books you gotta see. And that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up and find out who won last week's giveaway. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Now, if you guys have watched every frame of video from the beginning to right now, you guys know exactly what you are. Go ahead, say it out loud. Did you say it? Because if you didn't and you don't know, well, you guys are legends. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video and supporting the channel by watching all the frames. It's like the coolest thing that you guys could do and it really supports the channel. If you guys haven't hit that like button just yet, do me a favor and smash that like button. Now, if you watch that video and you guys, you know, you see the subscribe button and you haven't clicked it yet, you haven't become a subscriber to the channel, well, I just gotta tell you, what are you doing? Get yourself subscribed, hit that bell for notifications, and smash that like button. All right, guys, let's go ahead and cut up close and find out who won last week's giveaway. All right, guys, you guys know how we do this. We find last week's Wednesday pull list. We go ahead and copy the URL, and then we go over to here. We paste that URL, and then you hit this fetch button. We don't say anything goes, no. We say keyword filter, and you will have to put the hashtag I love comic books in your comment to get entered into this giveaway. That's all you need to do. Leave a comment with the hashtag I love comic books. Let's find, <clears throat> let's find out how many people did that. 50, we hit the 50 mark. We haven't hit 50 in a while, so that's so freaking cool now. With that said, let's go ahead and find out who won last week's giveaway. In three, two, one, it was Swamp Bat. Congratulations, Swamp Bat. You left the comment, been loving all the Tedesco covers for Tom King's Wonder Woman run. I cannot agree with you more. Congratulations, Swamp Bat, on winning last week's giveaway. Now, what I need you to do is to go over to Instagram and slide into those DMs and give us your address. Our handle is right here in case you did not know it already. And that's all I really need. And I will get your winnings out to you in three to four weeks. And guys, if you're interested in entering next week's giveaway, you need to do four things. First, you need to live in the United States of America. And the second thing you need to do is, uh, yeah, you need to be subscribed to the channel. And the third thing you need to do is leave a comment. And the fourth thing you need to do is have the hashtag I love comic books in your comment. And then you'll be entered to win something awesome from me. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video. I'll be back tomorrow with the best of 2023 cover lover picks. It's just gonna be a nice walk down memory lane of all my favorite covers from 2023. There are so many good ones. I tried to roll it down as best I could, but it's probably gonna be a 15-ish minute video with just looking at amazing covers from last year. So I hope you guys are into that. And after that, I'll be back with my final order cut off speculation and recommendations video. All right, guys, thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.